Alright, hi everyone. We are going to be going over the game trees problem, Surrealist Pac-Man. So the setup for this problem is that we have two agents. So the first is Pac-Man, and he's trying to make it to the dot in this lower corner. And the second agent that we have is the wall. So Pac-Man 1, the wall is number 2. And uh, the goal of Pac-Man is to eat the dot, as I said. The goal of the wall is to prevent Pac-Man from eating the dot by blocking him. So Pac-Man cannot go through the wall. And so the wall has a couple additional constraints in that it cannot uh, move onto the dot. So that would make the problem much harder for Pac-Man. And both Pac-Man and the wall cannot stay still for a move. So each time step, they have to move um, either up down, left, or right, or north, south, east, west, because we are using the cardinal directions in this problem. OK. So the first question, part A, it's asking us to draw a game tree with one move for each player. OK. So although it isn't explicitly stated in the problem, what this is asking us to do is to create the game tree. And as we can see, since Pac-Man is trying to get to the dot and the wall is trying to prevent him from getting the dot, this is a zero-sum game. So the wall is trying to getting the dot is good for Pac-Man, but it's equally bad for the wall. So in this situation, because we're assuming that they act optimally, we can assume that Pac-Man is a maximizing agent and that the wall is a minimizing agent. So then what this is asking us to do is that we have Pac-Man, and then uh, he has two actions in his current state, because remember, Pac-Man cannot move into walls. So this means he can either move uh, south, or he can move east. Okay. Then the wall is going to have a choice of movement. So if Pac-Man moves south, that means he's in this position. The wall has only three directions it can move because it can no longer move west. So it can move north, it can move uh, south, and it can move east. Okay, And uh, there's some kind of evaluation function down here. Uh, we don't know what it is yet. And then similarly, if Pac-Man decided to move east, he would be up here. The wall can no longer move north. So we're going to have the action south, west, and east for the wall. Again, some evaluation notes. All right. All right. So then part B is going over what is the value of the game. We're supposed to use Pac-Man score as our evaluation function. All right. So we can notice that Pac-Man's score is always equal to the number of dots he has eaten. However, in the first one, Pac-Man's only weighed one. Oh, Pac-Man has only made one move, and the wall has correspondingly only made one move. It's impossible for Pac-Man to have eaten anything in that sequence. So that means the evaluation function in the, all the children nodes is going to be zero, because he hasn't eaten anything. OK? And when you run minimax on this, so Pac-Man is a maximizing agent, the walls are minimizing again, it doesn't really matter what the maximizing and minimizing agents are doing, because no matter what, the score is 0. So the value of the game, which is the value in the root of the minimax tree, is going to be 0. Okay. Part C is asking, if we have a game tree with 10 moves for each player, then rather than just one, what would be the value of the game as computed by minimax? The answer in this situation is always going to be 1, because Pac-Man is always going to be able to force a win in 10 moves. Um, one way of doing this is just trying to step through, play it yourself, as if you're playing as the wall and Pac-Man simultaneously. So say Pac-Man moves uh, to the right for the first move. So Pac-Man is now in this square. The wall has to move. So say he's going to move over here to try and block Pac-Man. Pac-Man in this situation can then just move downwards. So I know it's kind of hard to see, but Pac-Man should be in the middle square now. Um, the wall, of course, cannot go over the food dot, as we said, so it really only has one option. It has to move upwards and to the, go into the corner. And then Pac-Man, as you can see, he steps next time right next to the food dot, and the wall has no way of stopping him anymore. Uh, I'm not going to go over more examples, but I think generally if you try playing this yourself, you should see that it's impossible for the wall to stop Pac-Man, given that Pac-Man has 10 moves. Okay, so that's why the value of the game is computed by minimax will always be 1 after 10 moves because Pac-Man will always be able to get to the food dot in, in that amount. All right, cool. In this part of the problem, we now have a partial game tree for our game. So this question is asking us to run uh, minimax and then run alpha beta pruning. So minimax is pretty straightforward. It's what we've done so far. So remember that the walls are minimizing agents and Pac-Man is a maximizing agent. So 
Um, for this left wall, we can see that it will take five. Then for the wall on the right, it's going to go look at the children for the Pac-Man. So Pac-Man is maximizing, it will take nine. The second Pac-Man is maximizing, it will take 10. Pac maximizing, it will take four. And the last Pac-Man is going to take six, right? And then as a result, the wall is going to go choose the smallest out of these, which is four. And then the overall value in the root is going to be five. Okay, hopefully that makes sense to everyone. All right, so next is slightly more complicated. We're going to be running alpha beta pruning. So what is to remember about alpha beta pruning is that if we're in, if we're doing the max value function as written in like the pseudocode for alpha beta pruning, we're always going to be checking that val is greater than or equal to beta. If it is, we return early. And for the min value function, we're always checking if value is less than or equal to alpha. Okay, and remember that alpha is going to be initialized to negative infinity and beta is going to be initialized to infinity, right? So alpha is representing the best value that uh, max has so far. Beta is representing the best value that min has seen so far, okay? And then what we're going to do in this situation, when we're running alpha beta pruning, we start from the root again. Uh, the root goes, what's the value that you have to the less left wall? The left wall will go be right. It will be comparing all the values to beta that it's uh, the evaluation nodes, but um, any value is less than infinity. So eight is less than beta, six is less than beta, seven is less than beta, and five is less than beta. So it will return five to this wall, and from this wall it will return five to the root. So the temporary value that the root has is five, and it will also set alpha to 5 because this is the best value it has seen so far. All right, beta is still infinity because um, because um, the root does not update beta. Beta will only be updated by the by a minimizing node. So in this case, this right wall will be updating beta. All right. So alpha is 5, beta is infinity. Also for this right wall, OK? So the right wall looks at pack this uh, left Pac-Man. Pac-Man is going to again be checking that the values, or Pac-Man is going to be checking that the values are um, greater than beta. Again, since beta is infinity, this will never be true. So nine gets returned to the top. And in this situation, beta actually gets updated to nine due to the minimizing node always updating the beta value. After beta, so we have five and nine. So for the second Pac-Man that we're looking for, the alpha and beta values passed in will be five and nine. So it will receive that. So again, the maximizing node is checking that you're greater than beta. We don't really care about the alpha in a maximizing node. So eight is not greater than nine, but 10 is greater than nine. Okay, so at this point, we can stop looking at this node and prune the node with evaluation function E equals 2. Intuitively, this is also true because we can see that if it's 10, it's already bigger than 9, which we've already seen, and so the minimizing node will never pick it. Okay, moving on. So alpha is still 5, beta is still 9 because we haven't updated anything, and we terminated this one early because we knew it wouldn't be picked. So the third Pac-Man. Um, all the values are smaller than beta, so it's just going to run normally, get four, and return four to the top. At this point, four beta gets updated to four because uh, we update in a minimizing function. Beta is equal to minimum of beta and val, similar to how it's done in uh, the maximizing function. Should have I maybe should have mentioned this earlier, but I've been acting according to that this entire time. But anyways, alpha is 5, beta is equal to 4. And at this point, we can go compare that the value, the temporary value in this node as well is 4, because that's the smallest out of the values we've seen so far. And in this case, for the minimizing node, again, we are comparing against alpha. And we see that 4 is less than alpha. And so we can just prune this entire rightmost child. 
Okay. Intuitively, this is because we updated this node's value. Time, so we know that this minimizing node's value is at most 4. It will never be larger than 4. And because we know the left wall has a value of 5, and we know that Pac-Man is a maximizing agent, we know that 5 is always going to be larger than 4 or any value smaller than 4. So to, uh, to summarize, we pruned uh, the E equals 2 node, and we pruned the entire node, rightmost Pac-Man node. And now we're moving on to the more complicated part of this problem. So we're going to be modifying alpha beta pruning in respect to the evaluation function. So what is this evaluation function? So we're getting evaluation functions that actually tell us something about the internal nodes. So remember that in normal game trees, right, um, we only have evaluation functions on the children nodes. We have no knowledge about the internal nodes. But now in this part, we're getting given a fact that we have an evaluation functions on internal nodes and that, moreover, uh, the actual value is within two of that internal evaluation function. So this means that uh, if we have like an evaluation function of four, that means that true value is somewhere in the range two to six. So what can we do with this knowledge? It won't affect how we run Minimax, but it will affect how alpha beta pruning can work because now that we have more information, we can potentially prune more things. So what is the answer? So the first part is asking us to modify before the for loop. So this is a max value function, but um, I believe that if we give given the max value functions, you can infer like a min value because they're about the same. So um, the answer for the first is if e minus 2 is greater than or equal to beta, then we return e minus 2. Okay, why is this the case? So this is as we know that for an internal node, right, the evaluation function again is within two of the real values. So beta is the best minimizing value that we have seen thus far. So if we know for certain that our evaluation function, that the true value of the node is going to be bigger than beta, we can return early, right, because we know that e minus 2, that's the lowest possible true value that it can take. So we check this, and we return e minus 2. Why do we return e minus 2? We do that because we don't want to return a value that potentially overestimates and can get pruned incorrectly later from the min value function when it's comparing against alpha. Okay. Now for the second part. Uh, we need to change how we're doing the recursive call because alpha and beta can potentially be changed by our evaluation function. So in this situation, we still do, we still call max val, we still call max, so, uh, sorry, we still call max of v, and then we call min value, pass in child, which is the successor state. Okay, but Instead of returning alpha and beta, we're returning something that has to do with our evaluation function, right? So alpha becomes max of alpha and e minus 2. And the, m the beta becomes min of beta and e plus 2, right? So we can see that e minus 2, again, is the lowercase estimate of what the true value is going to be. So we're taking max of e minus, max of alpha and e minus 2 to potentially raise it if we know for certain that the value in, the true value of this internal node is actually going to be higher than that. And then similar reason for beta, where we're comparing it with the highest case estimate. And we know that for certain, if, uh, if we know for certain that the actual value is higher than this, we want to, or you not want know for certain that the actual value is smaller than the best value seen before, we want to lower it. So the minus 2 and plus 2 are to guarantee that when we're changing alpha and beta, we are guaranteed that the actual value is not going to be um, actually lower than, lower than alpha or higher than beta. OK, now that we thought of the algorithm, we're actually going to move forward to running this algorithm on the same tree from the previous part. So. Right, we're going to be pruning a little differently given that we're run, uh, following the algorithm that we just thought of. And so um, remember the key difference is that we can actually define an initial alpha and beta value before we've even like seen any children nodes. So for example, in normal alpha beta pruning, we would never prune this node and we never prune this node because they're the first one the above node sees. But in this case, it may be different depending on uh, how the evaluation functions work out.
Okay. So starting off from the root, remember that we do, so alpha is normally initialized to uh, negative infinity, beta is usually initialized to infinity. But in this situation, we're going to be setting it, right, before we pass it into the below function, we're doing the minimum of beta with e plus 2. So this means beta actually becomes 7. And alpha is the maximum of alpha and e minus 2. So this means that alpha actually becomes 3. Okay. So the e equals 4 left wall node actually receives alpha beta values 3 and 7. So we do the same step where we do the min of beta and min of alpha to go do the, um, what, to set it in that function or to pass it in for the evaluation part. But it uh, doesn't really matter. We're going to calculate it anyways. But alpha is equal to 3 because the maximum of 3 and 2 is 3. And then beta is going to be 6. Why? Because the minimum of 6 and 7 is going to be 6. So 6 is e plus 2. So in the minimizing node, we're going to be checking that um, our values are less than alpha. You can already see that none of these values are less than 3. So we'll do the normal procedure of getting 5 and returning 5 to the root node. And in this situation, we update alpha normally, right? Following the a alpha is equal to the max of alpha and v. So the 3 in the root node for alpha becomes a 5. So alpha is 5, beta is equal to 7 in the root node. OK. So the wall, the right wall, receives alpha is equal to 5, beta is equal to 7. And we go down the first Pac-Man child. OK. So again, updating it. So what will be updated and passed into the evaluation function, again, it doesn't really matter what alpha and beta any a child node receives or, um, yeah, what a child node receives or a leaf node receives. But um, we're going to just do it to demonstrate how alpha and beta should be changing. But alpha is going to become 6 because the maximum of 6 and 5 is 6. So 6 is e minus 2. And then we are going to have beta remain as 7 because minimum of 6 and, uh, or the minimum of 10 and uh, 7 is going to be 7. So we get back a 9. And then once we have this 9 in this node again, remember we're going to be checking against beta in a maximizing node. And so in this situation, beta is 7. So 9 is greater than 7. So we will actually stop and prune the e equals to leaf node, which is different from our previous run. OK? So we get 9 back. And then uh, um, we don't change alpha or beta in any way because minimum of 9 and 7, 7. So then again, e equals 10 node. It receives these alpha and beta values. But we can stop right here because we remember that in the above part, we actually added an if statement to check what the evaluation function was in relation to beta, at least for the maximizing function. And e minus 2 in this situation is 8. We know at minimum the value in this maximizing node is going to be 8, but we already have seen a beta that is 7. So we already know that we're larger than the best seen minimizing values thus far. And so then we can prune this entire e equals 10 node. Okay. Again, this is different from what happened in our original alpha beta pruning scenario. All right, so that's interesting. So moving on, we go, we pass in alpha, alpha is 5, beta is equal to, oops, beta is equal to 7 for this Pac-Man node. And then what's going to happen, we don't update alpha or beta because um, max of alpha and e minus 2 is going to be 5 still, and minimum of beta and e plus 2 is still going to be Okay, so then we run it normally. So again, we're compa comparing this against beta. If any of these values are greater than beta, beta will return early, but none of them are. So we have four, and we return four to the top. Now the temporary value in this right wall node is going to be four. We do the same thing as in the first instance of alpha beta pruning, where since this is a minimizing node, we're still comparing against alpha, right? So four is less than five and five, where 5 is equal to the alpha. So that means we return early from the right wall minimizing node, and we don't explore the e equals 7 node at all. So this follows the same rationale as in the previous part. 
Okay, and with that concludes how our updated alpha beta pruning algorithm would work. We crossed out E equals 2, we crossed out the entire E equals 10 children, so the E equals 10 with the, these three children, and then we also crossed off the rightmost Pac-Man node following the rationale from the previous alpha beta pruning example. Okay, and that's it for this game trees problem.